G'day everyone. Today we're going to have a look at a Shaker V door. So here we've got a simple drawing with a cabinet with a door. We're going to go up to the drawing properties over here. We're going to go to the Door Master LT. Under the profile doors, we're going to select the series Shaker, the style Shaker V, and the version Shaker V1. I'm going to turn on the profile and press OK. As you can see here, the profile has turned on in the cabinet. I'm going to press the F8 to get all the machining out, which is exporting the machining. So then we're going to proceed over to EasyNest and look at the next step. Okay, now over here on EasyNest, first of all we're going to need a new piece of paper. The size doesn't matter because it's not what we're dealing with at the moment. We just need the paper down. If we go get a part, I'm just going to happen to go get my door that I created. Now I'm going to zoom in because we need to see differently between these two lines. Now one of these lines on the outside represents Shaker V, and one on the inside represents Shaker. We've spoken about Shaker in an earlier video, so we won't go over that one now, but it is the exact same procedure as just doing Shaker Door. The further part here we're needing is the Shaker V layer, so let's deal with that. If I click on this line here, right click, create a toolpath of an engraving capacity. Okay. Now it's important to note here that uh, the entry level of EasyNest can't do this technique. It is only available in the wood level. If I go to the top list here, I can call upon something I have made before. In this instance, I've made the 3D engrave with a 45 degree tool. As you can see here, the 3D engraved toolpath has to be engaged. Now obviously I've got it set to a particular depth. If I go to the edit, the depth has already been set. How many passes I'm going to do this. The speed at which I'm traveling. Please consult with your tool provider as to what speeds you should be using depending on the material. What direction we're traveling and any entry or exit methods. In this situation, I'm just coming straight down and coming straight back out. So if I press apply and if I save as, you can choose an appropriate name like that. It is worth noting there is a difference between a 3D engrave and an engrave. If I apply that path, you can see now that we have the brown line that indicates the toolpath. Here you can see it travels across and goes diagonally into the corner. Let's zoom in a little bit further. So that diagonal movement is actually a three-dimensional rise. So it goes from the lower level of seven millimeters down there up to the surface of the material up there. So it travels upwards, but then it falls back down the line and carries on down the screen. So what we need to do now is further set up our ATP. Here I've got a 24 by 12 18 MDF. I'm going to go to the layers. I'm going to go searching down this for the layer name Shaker V. As I said previously, we've already set up the Shaker, and that's explained in the other video. That technique is still used here. So Shaker V, we're going to go and grab that strategy we just looked at. That one there. The number over here, we set the design depth for 7 because that's what our strategy was designed for. This column here, the use depth, is now saying do the depth that Cabmaster has very specifically given us. So it'll stretch that toolpath to the appropriate size. Now I'm going to hit the Save button. Under the ordering and nesting, it is worthwhile still considering the current order that things are going in. Now the engrave is currently at the bottom here. I should be able to relocate it either after the island fill or before the island fill, depending on your preference and which gives the better result. I'll leave it open to discussion as to which way around would be the best way. Also, with regard to the tool order, you can check which tool order it's supposed to go in. Here, the V-cut is coming last. At this one, I'm going to put it before. If you want to more detail on the priority orders, we can explain that in another video. But at this moment, I'm pretty happy with what I've got. I'm going to hit Save. So now all I need to do is go to the parts list and add my job. Shake a V test. Getting my door. I'm not going to worry about the output today, so I'm just going to turn those off and process this part. And now you can see it has applied the tool path to that door. Let's take a closer look. So here you can see that we've got our shaker with two tools, so we're doing our hogging and our cleaning, and then we can see our 3D engrave. So that result should give us a flat section across the area here, 
and then a diagonal rise in the corner and across this area down there. Thanks for listening.